everyone, I'm Vanessa Joy and you are here in my studio. I'll be a little bit messy since I feel like I live here these days. But I am a wedding photographer in the New York and New Jersey area, which means I am 100% out of work right now, like a lot of you photographers. <laughs> but I am going to talk to you about how to shoot macro shots. So we are photographing these rings right here and I've got a little setup. I'm going to uh, shoot directly to an iPad so you can really see what these macro shots look like. But we're going to be focusing on macro photography. And if you are a wedding photographer like I am, you know that every single wedding you've got to photograph these babies. So I've got two rings here for you and let's get started. Let's jump right into how to shoot macro. I am shooting with the 1DX Mark III. Again, we're gonna tether via the Canon Camera Connect app right to the uh, iPad here. And I have a 100 millimeter macro on my um, camera. It's the Canon 2.8 100mm macro. Now, why 2.8? First of all, let's just start right there about the lens. You know, I usually shoot prime lenses. I love being around 2.2 and 2.0. My 135-2.0 is one of my favorite lenses. But for macro photography, especially of these rings, which is really where my expertise lies in photographing weddings, um, you know, you can't be at 2.8. We're going to talk about why you can i guess but it depends on what you're looking for now we're shooting this with natural light because i know the majority of wedding photographers i would say probably shoot with natural light and the majority of the time that's what i'm shooting with as well so we have number one thing that i do whenever i arrive uh, at the couple's house in the morning is i am looking for fun I'm looking for things. I'm looking for things that I think will look good on the, the macro shot that I know I'm going to do of the rings. Now, why is this important? Because you know what? Most of the shot in the macro shot is the background. So you have to find something that works. Now, number one, I usually look for something interesting like this. So this is just like a leaf thing. Uh, and I know some photographers that bring stuff like this, that bring like foil or gels, but what you find around a bride or groom's prep uh, is usually fine. So I don't bring anything. So this is what I found today. Um, another thing you want to look for, you know, the flowers are pretty easy. So I'll probably really quickly photograph on the flowers, a ring, because that's very typical of something that would be at a couple's house. Another thing I like to look for is something that's shiny like this, that has sparkle, that has sequence to it. This is going to make a killer background. So just wait for that. Probably now have glitter on my nose. Oh yeah, definitely do. And then the last thing I'm going to look for, and this will have a dual purpose, is something reflective. So see reflective? Boop. Oh, now that's fun. This, yes, thumbnail that. <laughs> um, but something reflective and there's two reasons for that all right let's just start off let's just start off easy let's go with the flowers because that's kind of typical right we're going to start off with the flowers i'm usually looking for something towards the top uh, and always photograph rings away from vents from air vents or anything where they could fall down and get lost. That is not a great way to start the day. Um, okay, so I will be looking for a place where I can put them. Usually that has texture. Usually that's a color flower versus a white flower. I just like the way that looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna go with this flower right there. And I think that'll work. Uh, sometimes I do kind of finagle it and lean. Whoa, <laughs> these are fake, don't worry. Um, but that that should be good right about there. Now, my, I have a window over here, and I do have a window back behind me. That light isn't hitting it as much, but it definitely is. Uh, and the light up here definitely is hitting it. So you can see, see how I'm blocking it, the light here? So you can tell that's really where the majority of the light is coming from. So when you're shooting macro shots, Personally, I like a little bit harder of a light, so I don't necessarily go right to the window because having a little bit harder of light is gonna show me a little bit more definition in the texture of the rings. And we have some pretty interesting rings here, which actually if I go like this, you're not even gonna be able to, to focus on and see. So these macro shots will help you out. Okay, step number two, some people, when they're putting them down, use sticky tack. I don't use sticky tack. I did one time use gum because I really just wanted it in this setting, but I'm not going to say who, nobody knows. <laughs> um, but for the most part, just balancing. So I'm going to go ahead and just balance these two rings. You know, sometimes it's just the one ring. Actually, for this, let's just do one ring and we'll talk about two rings later. Now, because I'm just photographing one ring, this is 
it might be one of those scenarios where you're going to end up shooting uh, at a lower aperture. But let's get started here. So I'm gonna use my live view just to get my settings. And you know what, I might use it to shoot. Truth be told, I'm usually sitting on the floor when I do this. Um, so if I'm gonna use live view, I actually have the stability of, of my knee when I'm shooting. So let's just give this a try. Let's get to some kind of exposure. Let's just get to some kind of picture here. All right, now my settings, I have this on AI servo. Good, let's just start, let's just start all the way at 2.8. I'm going to want my shutter speed higher so I don't get camera shake, especially since I'm actually gonna just knee it right here because this is actually more stable than if I hold it up to my eye. So I'm gonna do this, all right, but I still want to have a nice stable shot and the higher shutter speed helps that. It is pretty dark in here, so I'm actually at 2500, which is not a huge deal uh, for this camera, but obviously know your camera's capabilities. Now, sometimes I like using autofocus and sometimes I like just going to manual uh, and doing it myself. I'm gonna hold my breath when I shoot. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you right here. And this was shot, my final settings, just so you know for this one, since that they do come up here, but really small, it's 125th of a second, 2.8 on the shutter. I mean, there you go. That's probably the best exposure you're gonna get and as close as I can get. Um, and my ISO is at 2500. Now, if I zoom into this, oh good, this helps you guys see. This was shot at 2.8. What's in focus? Literally almost nothing. <laughs> we have this focus here. How do you like my quarantine fingernails? You like those, right? Nice. Um, so we've got this one prong focused up here, but down here on the bottom, there's nothing. Nothing's in focus. And when you're shooting macro photography at 100, all the way down at 2.8, your, your depth of field is literally the size of an eyelash. So this is not going to work so great. Now, let's change this up a little bit. This is also probably going to prove why you should have off-camera light potentially for macro shots because I'm gonna end up having to go higher on my shutter speed. I'm sorry, lower on my shutter speed and higher on my aperture to get, oh my gosh, I can't speak today. I want a higher aperture. So in order to compensate for that, I'm gonna have to go higher on my ISO, yuck, or lower on my um, shutter speed, Ugh. So those are my options, but since we're doing this as natural light, Let's just do it again. And I'm literally positioning my knee so that I can do this. Sometimes if I'm in a really dark scenario, I will end up laying on the floor or purposely taking pictures, which I'll do next to where I can just put my camera down. I typically don't bring a tripod. Okay, so let me just get a shot here. I'm gonna go all the way up to 7.1. That is where I typically like to live for my macro shots, somewhere around there. Um, a little bit lower is okay, but again, I wanna show you really the difference from when we shoot at 2.8 versus 7.1, right? Okay, really, really have to hold my breath. <laughs> All right, so that shot, yep, that's this one. We ended up being at 7.1, a 60th of a second, and at, um, <laughs> don't cringe, 10,000 on, on my, um, whatchamacallit, yes, it's actually not even that noisy at 1,000 on my um, ISO. Okay, so this is what we've got. Now let me zoom in. Now here at 7.1, both prongs are in focus. Let me raise it past the chat there. Both prongs are in focus and you're starting to see uh, even the diamonds back here be in focus. So you see why you have to have such a wide aperture and why it's probably nicer to have off-camera flash for this. Got it? Yeah, give me some hearts if you got it. <laughs> um, so that's a difference. So that's 7.1 right there, both prongs in focus. And then this is 2.8. Oops, let me put that up. 2.8. And notice now it's nice, you know, let me just go here. The background's gorgeous, however, the background's still nice here, but now we've got things in focus, all right? Admittedly, the background's a little bit more distracting here. So this is actually why I don't usually like photographing macros on flowers. All right, let's move on. Thanks for all the hearts. Glad you guys got it. Let's move on to how I usually, typically photograph this stuff. 
Okay, let's go with this little baby. It's just cool, it's interesting. We're gonna build this step by step and now I've got two of these. All right, I'm going to not have a lot of foreground, so I'm going to place them as close as I can towards me. And this is going to be one of those times. Let's just put it there. I'm shaky, shaky, shakerson. Okay, that looks good right there. And I'm going to place my camera actually down. Let me turn you guys so you can see a little bit better. There you go. All right, so I'm purposely positioning these rings in a place where I can place my camera down, okay? So I know just from the light in here, I know I'm gonna be really tight on, you know, my capabilities of being able to shoot um, with a shutter speed that's better handheld. So let's just go ahead and do this. All right, so I'm still at 7.1. You know, this is a little bit cold on the white balance, so I'm gonna go ahead and warm that up a little bit. And I sometimes like to exaggerate my white balance. I'm gonna back you guys up so you can see all the things. Hey. <laughs> all right, so I like it a little bit warm. So let's start here. This looks good. I'm in manual focus again. All right, and yes, I know it's vertical and I'm cutting off some of the ring, but trust me, I have a point, we'll get there. All right, so I haven't changed my exposure. Everything is nice and in focus and look at all the detail in this ring right there. See how much detail there is in there? If I was shooting a 2.8, I'd lose that and Lord knows what little minuscule of anything would be in focus, all right? So from here, you know, this is okay. It's okay, but it's not that interesting. There's really, there's no, depth to it, okay? So let's move on. I mentioned I like to find shiny things, right? These make great backgrounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this in the background. The further I go away, the better. Uh, I also like it to be in light, so don't let it go into shadow or you won't get the, the sparklies coming through. Okay, let me tilt so you guys can see again. There we go. All right, so I've got the rings here, got a little foreground here, and then I've got the sparklies in the background. You don't need to see me, you just need to see what's going on. All right, so let's go ahead and focus. And I actually need to move this this way so I can get the sparklies in the background. There we go. And I think I like about that crop there. And I'm wondering if I'm gonna like horizontal. Let's just do both. Nah, I don't think I'm gonna like horizontal. Let's just do it anyway. Oh, a little bit of light came in. I can lower my ISO, how nice. I apologize for being super creepy quiet. Okay. Sorry, I'm super creepy quiet while I shoot, but I hold my breath. Yeah, I like vertical better. Okay, so here's what we've got right now. Let's back it up so you see good exposure. How about? There we go. Okay, that looks good. All right, so see what started happening here? See, I've got my little bokeh, bokeh happening here. Now they're a little bit too blurry, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that sparkly candle closer, and then I'll be able to see the bokeh more defined, and we still have got nice, crisp, set of rings here at 7.1. All right, now there's one more thing. First, I am gonna move this forward, right? I am gonna bring this closer so I can see a little bit more of the, I'm sorry, I always say bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. All right, so I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer. Now the other thing I wanna do, put my rings back where they were. Good, yes, okay. I mentioned that I like to find reflective things. There's two reasons, number one, when I go here, I can actually use this as a little reflector. See that? You can't really see that that well. I'll bring you closer. Come look. Come look. Come with me on this journey. All right, see that? See the little streak of line? Nice reflect. Now, you could get a reflector for this, but this is more fun. Ah, yes, right there. See that? That's what I want. Okay? So I just usually have an assistant, by the way, but I don't have one here today, not even to film. Um, so let's go ahead, frame this up again, and I should be okay considering. 
and we'll use the vertical grip. And you know what, I think I'm gonna go to autofocus here and just tap on the ring. The reason why I'm doing that is because this uh, is on AI Servo and you can hear it. As I shake and move, it's going to adjust the focus for me. So it basically will adjust for my error as I go back and forth because I'm gonna be holding this at the same time. Yes, I'll have to do before and after for you guys. Well, that's without. Let me, this looks good. The bokeh looks better. I can't wait to show this to you guys. Let's put it there. I mean, now more than ever, right, is the time for you to brush up on your macro skills since no one's photographing weddings right now. I'm so picky when it comes to my macro shots, so I spend a while doing these uh, on the day of a wedding. Okay. <laughs> okay, I like these. I like these. These are fun. Okay, so let's do my before and after. Let's go to the where I did not have the reflection, which I believe is this one. Clearly not a wild difference. Yes, it is a wild difference. Okay, so let's start here. All right, so this is without the reflection. And notice when I add it, see the extra, extra uh, definitiveness. Uh, now granted, see this, how it's blown out right there? Uh, it's actually just blown out to you. There is detail here, I guess. Oh, there you go. See, you can see the correct exposure there. All right, I'll just give you a little bit of a tilt. So notice how everything is sharp. See how the, the bouquet here is now much more defined that I brought it closer, right? really really fun and then the difference between this as opposed to here much more bland when i don't have that reflection there's a reflector no reflector so see how this light got like more in the detail of this other ring yeah i like this one a lot okay now i mentioned there's two reasons for the reflector so the last thing i'm going to show you is one of my tricks now usually to be honest i'm just using my cell phone <laughs> for this but since um using my cell phone to stream to you guys, I can't do that. But what I love here is being able to use a reflector to hold the rings on. Now, this was nice, the leaf that I had, but it kind of like dug, it was like in and I don't know, it, it could be better. So instead, I'm going to use my reflector as a reflective surface. Now, I wonder if we can just mix things up and do this, maybe. Some rings stand up on their end and some just don't. And this one just does not. So let's do it this way instead, maybe. And this is where that sticky tack would really come into tape or maybe some hidden gaff tape. Hmm. If there's any way to do this. If you guys look on Adorama's stories, you'll be able to see like my best balancing act of all time for a wedding ring. It's not gonna happen now. No, okay. Back to pose one <laughs> with my, my poses for my rings. All right, so let's just get them all set up. Now, when I am setting them up, it's really important that both of the, uh, where I want to photograph the main diamond lines up with some point of focus with the other ring. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna look like one is in focus and the other one just isn't. Okay, this is good right there. Uh, except for the fact there's a weird logo. Good, okay, so this is the second thing that I like. Not changing anything else. Just using this as a reflective surface this time instead of using it as a reflector. Now this time I'm gonna go horizontal. Uh, I'm gonna go back to manual focus because now I have two hands on this and I just like having the control. And again, my settings right now are 7.1 on my aperture so I can get all of the possible depth of field that I can. I am at 60th of a second, which is definitely lower than I would prefer, but I am holding it on a table. I am not getting any uh, image stabilization perks on this lens or anything like that, but I'm able to actually hold it pretty good, I think pretty well. And then I'm at 6,400, I know, gasp, on my 
ISO. However, it's not so bad. It's really not that bad. Oh, you guys caught me with my socks. <laughs> All right, let's get one a little bit closer because there's something cool happening in the background here. I wanted to get, or actually not the background on my reflector. Get one more shot here. Cool. Yes, oh, so excited. I think these might be my favorite ones, so. <laughs> Okay, so here I did end up doing more horizontal with these. All right, so there's that where we've got like a ton going on in the background with the bouquet and on the bottom, actually didn't even show it that much, or is a reflection from that reflective surface that I have. Uh, you know what, you can't actually see it too. Let's do it this way. Um, so you can actually see it because the settings were on the bottom. So see how I made it, the reflective surface down there? Um, and now it's also reflecting, look, it's reflecting the bouquet and all the sparkle too. So we made this super, super sparkly and everything there uh, is in focus too. You know, and even at 6400 with this camera, I'm super happy with how clean this image is. Um, you can also tell by zooming in that this is not a real diamond or anything of any kind, but it still looks, you know, amazing. So there's, there we go. There's that one and I'm giving it a little tilt so you can get a proper exposure. I apologize, but there you go. Cool. Awesome. So that's it. Those are my tips for uh, photographing a ring, a set of rings, really just macro shots and the concepts. I'll just, I'll leave these here. So like a, I'm just going to through while I chat with you. Um, so we went from here where we were just at 2.8 and we learned that was a huge no-no because then only this tiny little one prong is in focus and everything else is super blurry, which, you know, if it's your style, <laughs> it's going to sound bad. If it's your style to have everything blurry, um, not really, but you know, it, I'm not going to say it's wrong because there are some clients that honestly really like it. And if it's making your clients happy, great. Uh, but eventually it won't make you happy because now that I've pointed this out to you, you will be very angry uh, at things being not in focus on your macro shots. So then we went to here and we went to 7.1 right there. And we noticed a lot more was in focus, but we weren't liking the background. Um, it's pretty, it's okay. Um, so then we moved on. And we went to, we were still at 7.1 and we just put it on a different surface and it was, it was okay, but it didn't really have a background. So there wasn't a lot of depth to it. And then we went here and we put the candle in the back, but it was too far back. So we really didn't get the sparkly effect we wanted. So we moved it forward and then moving it forward gave us the sparkly effect that we wanted, right? It wasn't it wasn't too blurry then. And then we showed you my quarantine nails again because they're driving me crazy. And then we used a reflector, which was really just this little shiny thing I have over here. We did this all with household items. Um, so we added the reflector onto it. Let me swipe to the fave. I think this one, we added the reflector onto it and it just gave it more light, more depth, more dimension right there. And then finally we put the photo we put the rings on a reflective surface, and I think this one's my favorite right there. Uh, so it reflected not only the rings there at the bottom, but it reflected all of the bouquet in the background as well. So we're able to get a lot, and I'm not sure how many minutes we've been live. Oh, 24, I've just been blabbing forever. But uh, that's how I typically get macro shots in uh, in a wedding setting. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Head to hashtag create no matter what, see what other creatives are doing during this time at home to advance their skills. Advance, I think I, think I just got a little accent there. I just got all types of excited. And uh, anyway, so hope everyone is staying safe um, and still being creative. I'm Vanessa Joy and I'm gonna hit end. And thank you guys for watching. Happy macroing. <laughs>